So um, what we want to do, guys, when we have a compound inequality written in this form, we want to separate it in two different versions, all right? So to do this, Dean, that's not the time right now. Um, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to separate this into two inequalities. Now, how can you do that? Well, what we did is I wrote this as a, as a combination of one. So one way to solve this is to separate them. So what I can do is I can cover up the first one, and then I have the inequality. Negative 2 is less than or equal to x minus 3. So I'll write that right here. Then, to write the other inequality, I cover up the other side, and I see I have x minus 3 is less than 4. So does everybody see what I did? So now, this is kind of like your basics, what you guys need to remember from now on. If you have a problem, because I'm going to show you a different version that might be um, a different version to solve this, but you guys can always revert back to this method. Separate it into two inequalities, and then what we'll do is just solve it for x. So I add a 3 to both sides. Negative 1 is less than or equal to x. Add a 3, x is less than 7. I get it? Now I just need to graph both of these. Um, one thing you guys can tell is when your inequality signs are going in the same direction, it's going to be an and statement. And you guys will see why it's going to be an and statement. So let's see, I need to have negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I make a zero or I make a circle at each of these points. I need to determine which one's gonna be filled in, which one's open. Remember, since this is equal to, less than or equal to, it's gonna be filled in. And this one, since it's just less than, it's gonna be open. Now, a lot of students make the mistake when they read these out loud, is they always, you know, they say it left to right, which is true, but they say, oh, well, since both of these arrows are going to the left. Both of my lines are going to the left, but we have to be careful. We always want to make sure we read our inequalities starting with our variable. So what this reads is all numbers, x, all numbers have to be greater than or equal to negative 1. So if I pick the numbers to the right or to the left, which ones are going to be greater than my negative 1? The ones that are right. And it's going to be all the numbers to the right. So you can say like all those numbers go in that direction, right? Then you look at this one. All numbers less than 7. Well, that's going to be, obviously, the numbers going in the other direction. Is that a 7 right there? Behind yes, the 7. Now, yes. look. What? Behind the 3. Behind the 3. You can't see that. No, no. Nope. No, down on the number line. No, nope. no. Nope. Right, that's you negative to, No, you go to 7. Behind the 3. <laughs> no, that's a, uh, that's a 4. four. So now, what you guys will notice is, and what I told you is, whenever you have your two inequalities in the same way, this is what we we'll call it's an and statement. So since this is an and statement, we're only going to take where they intersect. So the only place where these two lines, they both intersect, is between negative 1 and 7. So my graph is going to be me shading between negative 1 and 7. Rosalind, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So that's what your graph would look like. Cool? Pretty cool, isn't it? It's amazing. So you guys want